the Paul Ryan. This is very interesting because you see, uh, it's something that really makes me think um, how do you see the world is very subjective and more than if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Um, I feel when I, when I hear what's happening, when I hear, let's say, uh, Romney talking or even when I used to hear George Bush, I was like, everything is so, like the world has changed and I have a feeling that they are, their thoughts, the way they see the world hasn't changed. Right. I mean, it seems like, I don't want to use the word that is stuck in time, but it seems to me that the world has changed so dramatically. fast, dramatically. dramatically. I mean, think about it. You have a phone, this is not a Blackberry, it's a regular phone with my Hello Kitties. <laughs> but think about the fact that with one phone, you can, you can be anywhere. Absolutely. With just a Globalization. little device like sure. this one, you have information and you got access to it. Um, and the world is changing. Religions are changing. I'm getting a call, but I let it go. You see how fast? Everything is changing so fast. Right. And when I hear uh, the Republicans, without making, I don't, I don't want to make any exceptions, but I hear the speech and I feel that, are they changing their own vision of the world? I, mean, I think it's think? Uh, certainly difficult, I think, for, for Republicans um, to see the change. Uh -huh. um, as you can see, you know, in the U.S., the Latinos are growing very rapidly. Right. Uh, the 12 million. Dramatically fast. Absolutely. So true. That's so true. Uh, the 12 million that would likely go out to vote this uh -huh. year, which, which we're hoping, um, are they accepted? You know, there are a lot of immigration issues. It's something that's at stake. Nothing has been done. Right. Uh, and that's... Gun that's control. Gun control. Talking about that, Bloomberg was talking this morning about what happened in the Empire State Building. Absolutely. And he said that, well, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting these candidates to come clean and say, okay, what do you have to say about gun control? Right. Like I said, I, I think, you know, what's going to take someone out to, to vote? They want to know what's, when can they have a job if they're unemployed? Right. That is what that's Americans. The that's what for. Americans want in the U.S. Jobs. There right. are no jobs, and people need a job to survive. That's correct. That's correct. You think it's going to get better, Mildred? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm an optimist. The conversation. I am an optimist. I have to tell you. Okay. I do think that I, I uh, on a personal level, I usually turn a negative into a positive. Good. Um, I think you know. You and I mentioned earlier. We have to be resourceful ourselves. We need to be more creative. We cannot also wait, sit and wait for governments to give us the answers. We have to create those answers for ourselves. Um, I, you, when you introduce me, you say, you, you know, you mentioned, I've done a lot. I do a, absolutely. I can tell you, I have at least uh, seven different jobs. Right. Why? I need to be skillful. I need to be resourceful. If one thing doesn't work, something else has to work. Right. And so That's we the world we live in. Absolutely. Um, I read a book not too long ago. I was reading a book of Bill Clinton. Uh -huh. Bill Clinton, one of the things that he mentioned in his book at the beginning is when he was a kid, he also had at least seven, he's had at least 10 jobs from the time he was a, a teenager until now. And now he still continues with different jobs. Right. It's part of what we have to do now in yeah. our days. Um, it's a survival skill. Right. And it's a must. We must embrace we it. We must embrace it. We must do it. We don't have a choice. Absolutely. We don't have a choice. It's, I tell you, I'm very positive, but like I said, once again, Again, we have big challenges to overcome, and uh, I wouldn't like to be a president if you ask me, because I, I just to imagine the amount of pressure they sure. go through. I cannot even think what Obama does when he's, you know, late at night with the TV is off, Michelle is not in the room, he's by himself. I need to get some shut eye, and he closed his eyes. I, I would love to ask him if I have one day the chance to ask him. What, you know, what do you think at night when you put your head in the pillow? Does what? he ever get any rest? Do you ever get any rest? Do you sleep? Do you need sleeping pills? What do you do? Because it's like, like I said, all of us, we talk, but to do it is a different, different thing. And like for us, we're communicators. As an actor, as journalist, entertainers, Absolutely. people, we communicate. But to be in the spot and to be able to take decisions and make them happy and make them happen, I'm sorry, make them happy. Make them happy is, is a big challenge. Right. And make them happy at a, for a world, at, for the U.S., Right. for more than 300 million people. Mm -hmm. That's tough. That's tough. 
that's, that's tough. tough. That's very difficult. But like I said, uh, we can only hope for the best. Absolutely. We can only, only hope for the best. I want to ask you, I, want to, I know that we're, we're already done with time. I want to ask you something else, Mildred. Oh, no, no, no. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, how do we fix the world? How do we fix the world, you think? What would you do if you get into the position, that, okay, I'm going to be able to take some decisions. What would you do? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I do think that um, it is about legacy. Um, right. my, my philosophy of life, and it's something that I have done, um, I am involved in different initiatives related to women empowerment. I'm very passionate about it. Um, I think it's important that we get involved, that we don't just, you know, figure out we're here. You know, it's about what did you do while you were here? Right. And so, uh, do you make a difference? to me, it's about what can you make a difference? What, what will you do? What can you do? How can you make a difference? How can you give back? How can you contribute? Um, you, you should be able to contribute ideas, even to your, to your show. Folks should be able to listen to your shows and, and send you some people feedback, send you ideas of, of uh, about development, about the different topics that you touch on. That's a way to contribute. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I, I think people giving back. Um, in fact, the UN uh, recently celebrated the Humanitarian Day. Um, it is, people should be humanitarians. People should be contributing to other causes. Uh, it really is a way of creating a better world, certainly of giving other people the opportunity. And by doing so, by changing someone else's life, you're really changing yours as well. That's good. I like that. What do you think? Why people is so obsessed with media? Why are we so obsessed? It's what is it? It's the need for us to reach out for a higher level of thinking. What is it besides do you want to be informed? Besides that you want to be a better human being? You want to be a better mother, you want to be a better father, you want to be a better wife, a better husband. Why we are so obsessed with the media? Because it's, it's like we, we talked earlier, it's a lot of you know, negative energy coming right. from it. So why we keep being obsessed with it? Well, I think, you know, the, the first of all, I, you know, I think that it's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. Being a communicator has, really comes with a lot of responsibility because you're reaching millions of people. Right. Um, and with that said, it really should be a, a responsible job. Um, yet, people are obsessed because that's the way they get their information. People want to know today. It's every second. It's no longer... Uh, I will get it to you by the by mail. It will go out. No, no, just send I me. To get it right away. I'm sending you an invitation by mail. No, send me the email. Mm -hmm. I, I need to know where I'm going now, and what I will be doing in the next few minutes. So people are obsessed with. Really, it's about now, and when. And, and results. And, and we results. want results. Immediate, immediate results. Right. People are not. They, there's no longer the patience to to wait for something to happen. Right. And the world is constantly moving. Things are happening all the time. Every second, there's something happening somewhere in the world. People want to have access to that. Um, and in fact, it's one of the challenges, of course, that developing countries face. Is how do you bridge that digital gap? And it's really helping them. Um, one of the things that I mentioned to one of your camera ladies here at your show, which I commend you because having the opportunity to have women who are behind, who are working with technology, technology is going to be the biggest driver also of jobs. Right. And so one of the, the topics that have been discussed at very high levels has been how women can embrace technology because in the 21st century, that's where your employment opportunities are going to be. Right. And so technology is what everyone is betting on. In fact, um, in talking about job and unemployment and, and really creating opportunity in the U.S., technology needs to be part of that. Creating more technology opportunities, creating manufacturing, looking into these sectors so that you create those jobs. Those jobs need to be created here. We cannot be, uh, you know, doing trade or commerce or buying everything from outside sources because right. then we're not creating the jobs locally. But are, they, are we ready? I mean, are we, I mean, when you really think about that, I said, I, it's, it's interesting because you go to any restaurant, any diner, any place there is, you see only Mexicans work in those kitchens. Right. Uh, just to give you an example, I don't care what, I don't care what, let's talk about New York, let's forget about, the, let's talk about New York City. You go to any single place, fast food, a bakery, a diner, a baker place, you name it. All the hard work 
are done by many Latinos. Is done by Latinos. So think about that for a moment. Do we see? Do I see? I don't think so. But do we see people, just regular Americans, doing those kind of jobs? I don't. Quite frankly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. In the economy is is about finding balance, and how can you? Is is better, I guess, for business people to pay. I don't. I don't know. Four hundred, five hundred dollars a week, three fifty plus tips. Guys, I done my work. I've been around. <laughs> I have been around. I'm from the working class myself, and I'm very proud of it. But it's like, do I see, uh, with all due respect, an American, American people behind those counters, running those bicycles in the middle of the rain? Do, like I said, it's, I don't think so. I don't think so. So it's like, that's why the challenges are so big, because what do we do? Well, what do we do if right now New York says, okay, there's a famous movie done, Un Día Sin Mexicanos, sin creo Mexicanos, que es. Claro. Right? Yes. We switch to Spanish just for a bit, but. Sí o no, la película es muy conocida. ¿Cómo right. se? ¿Qué pasaría con los Estados Unidos si la mano de obra de los mexicanos, de los no, mexicanos existiera. no existiera? Claro. ¿Qué pasa con el país? ¿Qué pasa con los mecanismos de funcionamiento? ¿Qué pasaría con los restaurantes, con los diners? So it's like you think about that and say, wait a second, how we will fix that? What do we do? Right. Well, you know, that's it's interesting because that's where. Um, the, there's the, the hypocrisy of it, right? Because in in fact, um, ex when when you talk about the Repu the Republicans and some experts have actually talked about well, uh, yet the immigration is an issue. No, we don't want illegals in this country. Yet we don't want to do the hard work, right? But so we, how? But we don't want to also at the same time give them the opportunity to be uh, to to, ha to be legally in this country, right? So what do we do? We export, we bring some uh, extraterrestrials from out there to come here and work?